Welcome to the Voice of College Football as we look at disputed national championship seasons. And if you follow me on a regular basis and have heard me discuss it, I think just about every national championship in some way is disputed. But that's another topic for another day. Let's look at one of the better ones right here. This uh, has gained much debate throughout the years, of course, and did at the time. And uh, wouldn't these two programs like to be in this position now? Michigan, Nebraska, 1997. Both teams finished undefeated and they split a national championship. Of course, that was one season before the BCS championship game was installed in 1998. So let's tell you how 1997 unfolded. What we would have determined uh, had I received a vote in 1997. And then also what this would look like in the BCS era, the college football playoff era, and in today's conference configuration as well. So keep that in mind. In 1997, Penn State was the preseason number one team. They had a good season but faltered. Uh, One of their key losses was to Michigan late in the season when Penn State was ranked at number two. So, Nebraska finished 13-0. They won one more game than Michigan because there was a Big 12 championship game. That was the second year of the Big 12 championship game. Nebraska knocked itself out of the national championship race the year before with an upset loss to Texas, but they disposed of Texas A&M easily in the 97 Big 12 title game. No Big 10 championship game for another, what, 13 years. So, Michigan went 12-0 to Nebraska's 13-0. All right, let's take you through the Nebraska season. There was the one big controversy. Not that there was a controversy in regards to who should have won the game, but a controversy in regards to uh, the level of performance by Nebraska. They came within that close to lose to Missouri. Okay, Nebraska's first big win was against Washington. The Huskies were number two in the nation at the time. They didn't turn out to be quite that good, but the Huskers' win 27-14 to was a good one. Washington still finished 8-4 and four and number 16 in the country. They knocked off Kansas State 56-26. Impressive win because K-State finished 11-1 and one and number 8 in the country. And Nebraska dusted them by 30 points. They also blasted Oklahoma 69-7. Well, hang on. That was not Oklahoma, vintage Oklahoma. That was John Blake's Oklahoma team that went 4-8. and eight. Imagine the Sooners at 4-8, and eight. yes. But... We uh, note that because of the rivalry and, of course, the Sooner stature in college football, 69-7. to All right, the big game was the Missouri game. It's replayed all the time on the classic uh, college football shows. Uh, Missouri was uh, a a really good team. Corby Jones, a quarterback. Uh, They had some talent. The game was at uh, Mizzou. And it was just a back-and-forth game. And uh, Nebraska had the lead most of the game. uh, And they won basically on a deflected pass, and I'm not talking about a typical deflected pass. If you've never seen the play, you got to look it up. Nebraska won on a ball that was kicked in the air off the shoe of a Nebraska wide receiver uh, for the game winners. 45-38 Nebraska in overtime over Mizzou. That Mizzou team only finished 7-5, and but they had enough respect based on that game and other efforts to finish number 23 in the country. Nebraska, the aforementioned Big 12 championship game was a joke. They whipped Texas A&M 54-15. And it was a decent Aggies team. They finished number 20 in the country at 9-4. and four. One interesting game here to note, even though Colorado was only 5-6, and six, they gave the Huskers a tough game, 27-24. And Colorado started the season number 8 in the country. So a lot of um, a way to analyze this game because, again, Colorado started number eight in the country, but they only finished five and six, but they gave the Huskers a great game at 27 to 24. And also because that was the only team that both Nebraska and Michigan played. Huskers only won 27 to 24. Michigan beat uh, Colorado 27 to three. Again, a preseason number eight team in the country. All right, let's look at Michigan's schedule. Uh, a couple nice wins against Michigan State and Iowa. Both teams were number 15 in the country when they played them, but they both finished unranked at 7-5. and five. So decent teams, but not great teams. Michigan won those games 23-7. And the Iowa game, I remember it well. Michigan barely won that one, 28-24. That was a close call for the Wolverines there. All right, you also had the game against Penn State late in the season. That was a huge one. So Michigan had two huge mammoth efforts late in the season. They were taking on uh, number two Penn State. 
and uh, they won that game 34 to 8 in Happy Valley, and Penn State finished at 9 to 3. They were a top 15 team in the country. Wisconsin, they were number 23. With, uh, Michigan beat them 26 16. Wisconsin finished 8 and 5 unranked. But it's to note Michigan State, Iowa, Wisconsin unranked to close the season, but they were close to the rankings. And then, of course, the big one, the game at the big house, Charles Woodson took over and won the Heisman Trophy on that one day. He had a big uh, pass reception that set up a touchdown. He had an interception in the end zone uh, when the Buckeyes were threatening deep. Um, And then he also had a long punt return, of course, for the touchdown. That was the Desmond Howard kind of moment. And Michigan led that game against uh, a top four Ohio State team. So the Buckeyes came in and would have won the Big Ten Championship with a win and gone to the Rose Bowl themselves and done what Michigan did to them a number of times during the 90s and spoil a perfect season. Uh, The Buckeyes came back from 20 to nothing down to make it 20 to 14 and get the nerves pumping um, and and the the blood pumping and the nerves uh, going there in Ann Arbor in the fourth quarter. But uh, Michigan held on 20 to 14 to beat a number four Ohio State team. And Rod Woods, uh, of course, uh, Charles Woodson won the Heisman Trophy there. Interesting to note that Michigan's schedule was tougher on paper in the preseason uh, than Nebraska's, but maybe Nebraska's tur- uh, schedule turned out to be a little bit tougher in the end because Michigan took on seven ranked teams, but only three of them finished ranked. Ohio State, Penn State, and of course Washington State in the Rose Bowl. Nebraska took on four ranked teams at the time of the kickoff, but five finished ranked. All right, we had a split national championship. Here's what happened. Nebraska had the extra game. It was the dominant performance against Texas A&M, 54-15. Nebraska, uh, Michigan was in number one in the polls for most of the way. Uh, considered the better team, uh, especially once Nebraska lost that game to Missouri, or <laughs> almost lost that game to Missouri, went to overtime and only won by a touchdown against a pretty lightly regarded Missouri team that um, was unranked at the time. Nebraska actually, this was about week 10, actually fell to number three in the polls. Uh, After that win, the dominant performance by Nebraska in the bowl game over Tennessee, Nebraska won 42-17 against Peyton Manning and company, the SEC champion, while Michigan slipped by Ryan Leaf in Washington State 21-16. So Washington State came in at number eight in the country. Highly regarded, 10-1, and one, even though Washington State's not a power and they're typically not um, regarded as one. Tennessee considered a better team, number three in the country, coming into the game, taking on Nebraska as the SEC champ, and Nebraska just dusted them off. So this is what it did to the polls. Going in to New Year's Day, Michigan in the AP was up 69-1. to one. That was the poll split. That was the voting split. In the AP, 69 to 1 for Michigan going into New Year's Day. In the coaches poll, it was 53 and a half to 8 and a half Michigan. So Michigan had a commanding lead in both polls. But then again, they had a tough game against uh, Washington State, won 21 16, and Ryan Leaf was actually throwing the ball into the end zone to win the game for Washington State late. Nebraska more dominant, 42 17. If you, if you watch the game, wasn't uh, like they came out 28 nothing in the first quarter. It was a slow taking over of the game, uh, but they did dominate in the second half, 42-17 again. So this is what it did to the polls. In the coaches' poll, in which Michigan led 53-and-a-half to 8-and-a-half, it swung to Nebraska 32-30. And then the 69-1 to lead by Michigan in the AP poll turned out to be 51-and-a-half to 8-and-a-half. So Michigan still... Easily won in the AP, but Nebraska's dominant performance against Tennessee swung the coaches' poll to Nebraska 32-30. Now, was there some collaboration there? Possibly, because that's exactly what should have happened. You had two quality football teams. You had one team that played an extra game and winning a conference championship game that played a more dominant performance in its bowl game against maybe a team that was a little bit better. But then you had another team that probably had a more quality schedule on paper and uh, didn't have that flukish, freakish kind of win like Nebraska did. So you had pros and cons on both sides. Very close, very close. But it goes to show you that 
had Nebraska received one less vote, they would have had a split, split national championship, 31-31 vote. Or if Michigan would have gained just two more votes in the coaches poll, they would have had a consensus national championship. That's how close it was for the Huskers uh, in squeaking out that split national championship. Okay, my vote would have been a difficult one. I would have been clamoring for a playoff as I was starting in 1984. Wrote a term paper in 1984. Let's get a playoff, 16 teams. Uh, So certainly by 1997, I was like, this doesn't make sense. These two teams should have been played, uh, and uh, there should have been other teams involved. Uh, But if somebody would have held a gun to my head and said, hey, you got to pick a team, you got to vote, it would have been, again, neither team uh, should have been number two. They both earned a national championship. They went undefeated against tough schedules. But I would have had to have voted. This would have been a tough call for Michigan. Played the more complete season and uh, didn't have the fluke win. All right, how does it play out? How would this have played out later? Now, that doesn't necessarily, I mean, Michigan would have won the game. There's a difference there between measuring the resumes versus who I believe would have won the game. Man, it's 23 years later. I, I don't know who would have won the game. Nobody knows. You you think Nebraska fans, you think Michigan fans, you know who would have won the game. Of course, we have no idea who would have won the game. You can look at results from both teams and 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 point to, oh, Michigan looked like the better team here, but Nebraska looked like the better team there. Uh, you can go through the rosters and try to rate NFL players. Of course, Michigan had the best player. We know that. All right. One year later, it would have been solved. In 1998, the BCS was upon us. And so one year later, we would have had Michigan versus Nebraska. Bam, on the field. Wouldn't that have been the answer? That would have done it. All right, let's move ahead to the college football playoff era. We would have had a little controversy, not a ton, but a little controversy here. If you look at the final rankings, it was Michigan number one, Nebraska two, Tennessee three with one loss, and Florida State four with one loss. Tennessee won the SEC, Florida State won the ACC. There were no championship games except the SEC and the Big 12. Now, North Carolina and Kansas State both went 10-1, and one, but... Florida State beat North Carolina, and Nebraska mauled Kansas State. So that would eliminate those two, the head-to-head. All right, the issue would have been Washington State. Washington State was also 10-1 and as the Pac-12 champion. So you would have had some controversy. Five teams with zero or one loss with not a head-to-head, and Washington State most likely would have gotten left out, I would think. Florida State might have been the best team in the country, actually. Uh, They ended up beating Ohio State in the Sugar Bowl. All right, so that would have been the controversy. Washington State would have been ripped off. If we move this up to today, well, you've got a different configuration of conferences. The ACC championship game would have been Florida State, North Carolina, two 10-1 teams. Nice ACC title game. Big 12 would have been, well, no Nebraska, no Texas A&M. They're gone. Kansas State and Oklahoma State would have played in the Big 12 title game. Of course, the schedules would have been different, but we can't go through all that. Pac-12 would have been Washington State, UCLA. UCLA was a nice team, 10-2. and two. SEC was what it was, Tennessee Auburn. Uh, Peyton Manning and company finally got over the Florida hurdle. Even though they lost to Florida, they went on to win the SEC championship game over uh, Terry Bowden's Auburn Tigers. And then in the Big Ten, lo and behold, what would have happened? Michigan and Nebraska would have played in the Big Ten championship game. How about that? All right. Interesting look at 1997. Again, I would have voted for Michigan, but I would have been going screaming on here. They need to play. They need to play. We need a playoff. The next year, they would have played for the BCS championship in the college football playoff era. We got Michigan number one, Nebraska two, Tennessee three, Florida State four, with Washington State left out most likely. And then I just lined it up in terms of today's conference configuration. Michigan and Nebraska would have played an undefeated mammoth war in the Big Ten championship game. That would have been phenomenal. All right, 1997. 
get us to, man, we got to get these videos to like 10,000 views. I need some incentive to do more of these, even though I love doing this. Uh, believe me, but uh, give me the likes, share the videos out on social media right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, and give me your requests as well. We'll see you next time.